is Lenore von Stein, and this is an episode of The Facts, and I'm sitting here tonight with Beth Griffith, with Rachel Evans, Andrew Bolotowski, and Bern Nix, and we're going, we, tonight we're going to rehearse for uh, an episode that we're going to shoot right after this, uh, and it's about, um, uh, it's about making a, a good male character, something that I've had a hard time doing. Uh, as, as a writer, you know, creating a, 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 a well-rounded, detailed, um, uh, lifelike figure, I'm into realism, of a, of a man, because I haven't had a whole lot of enough, well, uh, what I'm analyzing is why I haven't been able to do that, and um, so, um, and, and part, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the oppressive nature of this particular civilization that's part of the uh, reason the you know woman as an appendage you know veiled or you know kept in somewhere you know or something you know and I, I just want to read this this thing by Enlightenment thinker so here we're talking about I'm talking about Rousseau and Diderot Diderot this guy who wrote the encyclopedia one of the encyclopedias so these are like the the top uh, thinkers uh, about the equality of humankind but not the equality of women you know 50 percent of any population not the equality so this guy Rousseau he famous he wrote the social contract and the discourse on discourse on the origins of inequality uh, uh, but he thought that women should be educated to be inferior to men and they should center their lives on on on, on household and rearing children. He also thought they were weaker uh, and, and inferior to men, uh, perhaps because th they had a greater capacity for feeling and giving love. You know, it's just, it's Rush Limbaugh. And, um, and, and Rousseau thought women should be excluded from public affairs. Uh, well, I, uh, you're my friend, Rousseau. I'm for you, honey. You're right up my alley. I, why don't I like that? That sounds okay. What's my problem with that? Let's try, let's rehearse uh, this thing called Willy Vaughn. It's what Willy Vaughn meets to me, means to me. Willy Vaughn was uh, somebody I knew when I was a kid. Um, and I knew him throughout my childhood, but never very well. But I, I always felt I liked Willy Vaughn. <laughs> and um, still like him. Uh, and um, in a calm way, in a it's an okay kind of person way. So wh what's the cue? It's a built-in cue, right? Mm -hmm. Should Sorry. I count it or we're just going to do it, right? Should we count it and do it twice or? I don't know. Let's just do it and yeah. see what happens. Let's just do okay. it. <laughs> I have a sense of adventure. All right. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and we know what that means. Okay, well, I, here I we are. I don't, but. <laughs> well, you'll find <laughs> out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, I never got to the end of the home against home. <laughs> um, what? Try it again. Yes, let's try it again. Thank you. <laughs> I was afraid to say that. <laughs> but we'll be there to protect you. You don't have to be afraid. That's right. I don't have to be afraid. <laughs> Not as adventuresome. Not as adventuresome. <laughs> what is it about? Not as adventuresome. So, um, uh, uh, this guy Diderot, who I mentioned before, Diderot, also one of the you know members of the Enlightenment thinkers, founders of ideas that are you know in place. Well, maybe they're less and less in place here than they used to be. But anyway. He was part of the team that created the first encyclopedia. And he favored articles for the encyclopedia that emphasized women's inferiority and, and, and weakness, as well as promoted a double sexual standard. Why would you want a double sexual power? What do you get out? Well, it's obvious what you get out of it, but you know, it's a smart move. Can't you do better? Can't you do better? Can't you do better? Isn't there a better way? class and middle class women, but he didn't have any articles on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had he has some articles on upper class women and economic activities. And listen, this situation of women is very pertinent to the sex life of the world. This guy named Rush Limbaugh, I'm going to uh, 
um, Rush Limbaugh, there's a, there was a student, a, a, a law student, who he called, <laughs> he, she, she testified that about how women should be provided free uh, birth control, and, uh, and or people in general, men too, I guess, you know, free birth control. And, and Rush Limbaugh <laughs> called her a slut and, and said she's having sex so much, she needs so much birth control, which is absolutely absurd because, you know, the amount of time you're having sex, the amount of birth control you need, you know, it, not necessarily connected or hardly connected at all. I mean, you take the pill anyway, but I mean, so, and, and, and this flies with a lot of his audience, even though they know better than this. We're living in a, in a you know, I don't know what you, what this period of time, but boy, it's, and, 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 and women who are the, who are the, 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 that's what the conservatives hang their hat on, this war against women. They, 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 they uh, you know, put, do this to them and do that to them and make them do this and don't give them that and why should we care if they, you know, and do this and hurt them in this way and hurt them in this way and humiliate them in that way and lower them in this way. And do, 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 what the heck, that's what we have to do. That's what we have to do. Yo, 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 So I'm thinking, you know, this problem I had writing a male character was because, you know, I was <laughs> maybe I didn't have enough sympathy. I was worried that I didn't have enough sympathy. I didn't have enough sympathy. If if you take your, your if you take your boot off my neck. Be able to care about you more. See you better. this work on this piece criteria <laughs> I was putting together this piece, this the the tells this you know these episodes that we're filming. I was I was having a hard time finding where's my passion. How, I can't find my passion on this issue. And then I realized my passion was right there. I was terrifically passionate on this issue. I was I was just you know like squashing it or stemming it or something you know so that afraid. <laughs> and. Um, yeah. So this has a built-in. Oh no. Mm -mm. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. Flute plays bass bar mm -hmm. 7. Mm -hmm. And then yes. Mm -hmm. You don't have that? Okay. She does now. She does now. <laughs> okay, so so try bar 7. Okay, I'll give you bar 7. <laughs> <laughs>
away for a little bit there. One more time with feeling. That was a good idea. Excuse me. Okay, wait, wait, wait. He has to, he has to engage his feelings here. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. Was a little MIA, but not as MIA. Um, spirit. Spirit. I always feel very pithy on that piece, you know, like I just, you know, like ditty bopping, you know, on that piece. Um, and uh, there's this another 18th century, the same time these guys were saying this stuff, there was this chick named Mary Wolf Wollstonecraft uh, who wrote a vindication of the rights of women and argued that to confine women to a separate domestic sphere was to sphere was to make them sensual slaves of men, and that as victims of male tyranny, women could never achieve their own moral and intellectual identity. She said that denying good education to women would impede the progress of all of humanity. You know, it ain't just a faster race, you know. I, my, my winning is, my, your losing is my winning, you know. It's, there's something else, there's another way these things could be organized. And, um, she, she demanded the kind of intellectual liberty for women that the Enlightenment writers were championing for men. And, um, don't believe the more I went there. Oh, freedom, oh, freedom, oh, freedom, oh, for me. And before I'll be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and I'll be free. Saudi Arabia, and when the women would come visit her, she was a woman, right? So she's stuck in a house all the time. And when the women would come visit her, they lift up their veils and their teeth. Relaxed. 
Whose cue is it? Me. Mm -hmm. Twice. Okay. So we should make some noise <laughs> before he starts, right? Is that why you have it twice? I don't know. I guess so. I have it twice. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> I'm reading this book uh, by Jonathan Kramer on the time of music, and um, oh. yeah, it's really nice. I'm only on the second chapter. It took me a long time to get through the prefix. And um, in this in this book, uh, he t the second chapter anyway, he's talking about uh, linear and nonlinear time. That linear time is the is the you know set up a progression of uh, of uh, you 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 see the um, you set up something that develops, you know, like you develop from one thing to another. And nonlinear time is something, yeah, this is my uh, paraphrase from not much study, is, 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 is some overall aspects of the piece uh, that, that are some, you know, have to do with the time, you know, music and time is, I'm, I'm not doing it. But anyway, this piece, <laughs> it's not really linear, is it? I mean, there's, there's no linear, motives in here. I mean, one thing isn't setting up, it may be setting up, but it's not, it's not, it's not repeated. You hear one thing that's repeated in this, right? Yeah. That's true. Uh, but it's not really, it's not, you know, theme, develop the theme. You know, a lot of modern music isn't writ that way, written that way. And, um, and uh, that's, um, so, I wish I had, what do you, Help me. No, 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 no. Was <laughs> no. it that, 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 in my part? Yes, it's yes. Certain, certain, it's like a, yes, this. It's like a motif or something. Right? Or this, know. but this idea of linear time, this moving forward yeah, in, no, this, no, no, in no. this, in this progression, beginning, middle, end, uh, in this Western progression. Mm -hmm. Space. Um, and modern music, all, uh, well, all music doesn't always just, does not, no music has just that. Um, gee. The well, early band. music, Baroque music, would sort of have a bass line that progressed, and mm -hmm. you'd follow that, and then things were built around Continue. it, or it mm -hmm. was very much central, mm -hmm. where, you know, contemporary music, or 20th century music, certainly decided to expand out of just no, no dr harmony-driven mm -hmm. 
Right, no music. harmony. Music, and a lot of it was harmony-driven, I think, the, co- the structure, right? Yeah, well, I was thinking of it on, like, the space and time contend or something, it's like a continuum. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm getting signals that we're close to the end of the rainbow we're here. We're out of time. We're out, we're to see, to be be see, to be see, to be see. So this is good night for now. You know, we, we're going to be back as always. And you can find us on the web uh, at 1687.org. And uh, 